my name is Adam Winrich and this is a video about different ways to taper a whip. Now I know there are a lot of videos out there showing how to make a whip and this video is more focused on how to alter those designs to change the taper to make them better for certain tricks. I'm going to talk a lot about uh, different ways to shape a whip, throwing out some names like cigar, rocket, needle, lance. I'm going to talk about a concept I call the drop coefficient and uh, towards the end I'll talk about what I think is the ideal shape for a stock whip for doing tricks. And uh, these days I'm kind of out here in the middle of nowhere trying to stay away from the coronavirus and uh, whipping a bunch of wild parsnip that's invasive in these parts. And I'd also like to give a shout out to Christopher Milton who was nice enough to put a small donation into my Venmo account and he requested this video. So this one goes out to you Christopher. Now let's get to my first schematic that I drew out myself. Here's my first schematic. And I got the idea for uh, all these different names from Blake Gorey of Smoky Mountain Whips. Blake is a super talented whip maker, and he came up with this fun way to describe the different ways to shape whips. And I did draw this out myself. I can't say that I had my kid draw it. I am just this talented. Anyway, our different shapes are cigar, rocket, needle, and lance. Now, uh... Cigar, that would describe a whip that basically has no taper, kind of like your common, cheap, four-plat swivel handle bull whips that are often available at souvenir stands or in uh, tack shops that sell whips for souvenirs. Then we have a rocket, uh, which sounds cool. And the two shapes we're really going to want to talk about are the needle and the lance. So the needle would be a whip that basically has an even taper all the way down. And the needle would be a good shape for like a light handled bull whip, something where the whole diameter of the handle is about three quarters of an inch and maybe has a handle that's, I don't know, about 12 inches. So the needle would be a good shape for that. Um, but generally the, the needle shape would make kind of a heavy whip if you make the handle uh, thicker than that. And that could be for good for something like can cutting. But uh, most of you out there, I think based on watching fancy, fancy videos by people like Todd Rex, are going to want something like the lance. Now the lance is a very good shape for whips that'll do a variety of tricks. And I'd also say the lance is essentially how David Morgan shaped his Indiana Jones bull whips. Back when I was making whips full time, I made uh, several Indiana Jones whips, and a lot of enthusiasts would only talk about the different way the handle is shaped, but no one would ever really talk about the way the thong is shaped. So how David Morgan would get this lance-type shape is that his first belly would only be about uh, one quarter the length of the whip, his second belly would be half the length of the whip, and then the rest of the whip, this, the sec whole second half of it, would be shaped just by sort of the remaining core strands in the second belly, the bolster, and how he dropped his strands as he went on down. And uh, the lance shape is also good for uh, like other heavy bull whips. Say if you have a bull whip that's going to have a handle diameter of about seven eighths of an inch or larger, the uh, lance shape is good. And this is also good for either performance hybrid whips or stock whips where you want the whips to do very fast volleys. Now you might be wondering, how do we change the shape of our whip? So in my next schematic, I'll try to explain that. So essentially what I've drawn out here is how I would make a paracord bull whip. If you've seen the video I did with Nick Schrader on how to make a whip, you'd see in that video that basically I'm going to have a core, and then I'm going to braid a belly over that, and then I'll braid my overlay. And so your core is basically going to determine the taper from the end of the handle to the end of the core. That's going to be the main thing that's going to form that taper and that part of the whip. Your belly and then your overlay don't really have a whole lot to do with the change in the taper of this section of the whip. Uh, you're just more worried about dropping strands in your belly and overlay to suit the shape of the whip determined by the core. And then once you're past the core, then it's how you drop strands in the belly that determine the taper here, or how you drop strands, and then once you're done braiding, how you sort of trim out those extra strands. That determines the taper there, and then you can see the overlay just follows that shape as it goes on down. And then once you're past the belly, then it's how you drop your strands in the overlay that determine the rest of the shape of the whip. So this basic shape that I've drawn out here uh, is essentially a lance type shape. And you can kind of see that uh, the, the core uh, goes to about half the length of the whip. And then the uh, belly goes 
oh, in here, I would say, uh, this is about a six foot whip, so it's about nine inches past the core, end of the core, and then the overlay goes the rest of the length of the whip. So if you wanted to uh, change this shape to something uh, more like, say, a cigar, well, then you would just make the belly much longer and you'd make the core much longer. If you want to make a rocket, you would make the core shorter and the belly longer. If you want to make a needle, you would basically make all of these even. So the core, based on how I drew it out here, is basically like a needle shape. So you just make all these shapes needles so you have a nice uh, straight line there. And uh, if you want to make this shape even more of a lance, um, you, I'd say you could uh, make the core a little bit shorter and maybe even the belly a little bit shorter. So that's shaping a whip. And another concept I have related to shaping a whip is called the drop coefficient. And I'll explain that in my next slide. Okay, I really let my inner artist go nuts with this little drawing here. See how I added stars with uh, black and gold stars there. So a drop coefficient, this mainly applies to paracord whips because that's mostly what I'm making now. And how I think of it is the number of inches between each dropped or cut out strand in a certain section of a whip. Like It determines how I taper my whip. So say if you wanted to make a needle shaped whip, um, you could drop strands out like evenly throughout the whole whip. So basically determine if you want to make a needle and to determine the drop coefficient for the whole length of the whip, you basically determine in how many spots you drop out strands and that would just be in each section that determines the taper. So you determine how many you drop out in the core, how many then you drop out in the belly after the core, and then how many you drop out in the overlay once you're off the belly. You add up all those drops and then you divide it by the basically total length of the thong of the whip and that would give you a drop coefficient to make a needle. And I'm going to actually get out a core that I've paired to give a better illustration of what I mean by drop coefficient. Now to illustrate my concept of drop coefficient, I have prepared this core for a five and a half foot bull whip. The total length is about uh, 33 inches or half the length of that whip and handles eight inches. And I've taken four strands of paracord with the core left in, doubled them over, bound them onto the handle, and then uh, added a few little extra coreless strands in here to help bulk up this part of the whip. And uh, once we get to the end of trimming these out here, then we can talk about the drop coefficient. And uh, I've taken this part of the whip and I've trimmed them all out evenly at two and a half inches. So two and a half inches would be my drop coefficient. And dropping them out evenly all the way down basically makes it a needle shape. And because this uh, won't be a terribly heavy bull whip, uh, works fine to make the th whole thing tapered sort of in the needle shape where the drop coefficient is even all the way down. If I wanted to make it more lance shaped, I would just start cutting these strands out uh, a little bit quicker and then that would make for a shorter drop coefficient here and a longer drop coefficient down here. And uh, also you notice this lovely bull whip I have here that I made, that's a 10 foot bull whip. And uh, just to give you a quick example, this one had a core that was five foot three inches long and had a drop coefficient of five inches. Now I'll move on to how to shape one of my favorite whips, the Australian stock whip. This is my last diagram and I wanted to talk about a uh, specific whip shape that is near and dear to my heart, the shape of a stock whip, because I use uh, stock whips the most to learn uh, difficult tricks that I myself am interested in. And basically I've, uh, in all my stock whip buying and making, I believe this is the ideal shape for a stock whip from four to seven feet long. So basically, uh, you can see the whip, it's, uh, the, you're going to go 12 inches with no taper, you're going to keep that straight, or you can have an optional swell up. Um, but the stock whips I've been making lately out of a 275 cord, I've just kept them straight for the first 12 inches. And then at 12 inches, I'm going to drop strands so that way I have an even taper all the way to uh, six to eight inches before the very end of the thong and then that part will also have no taper that's just going to be straight and then it'll be five and a half millimeters in diameter. Oh, and also you can see I wrote here this first 12 inch section you want your thickest part to be 14 millimeters in diameter so if you swell up you're going to swell up to 14 millimeters in diameter or if you keep it straight, you're just going to be 14 millimeters in diameter right at the beginning. And I've found that uh, this shape 
for me is the best for doing uh, lots of general tricks. I've uh, certainly bought many stock whips and I've gotten some that don't really have this shape and usually every time that happens I'll write a my version of a nice message to the whip maker and be like hey why don't you try making them like this this I think would be really good um, the five and a half millimeters to at the point to me is ideal though um, I have had some whips that are like six millimeters at the point so you can kind of fluctuate between six millimeters kind of on a heavier whip maybe down to uh, five millimeters in diameter at the point on a finer whip Well, that was my video about different ways to shape a whip. If you want to learn more about this subject, I'd recommend looking up a video by Johnny Ögren from Sweden. He has witchcraft whips in Sweden, and he made a video about the brachistochrone problem. And I think it's a great video. I'll put a link in the description to that video. It's a great video to watch. And uh, I'd also like to mention, if you're like Christopher and you like the videos that I've posted all these years and you'd like to show your support, I'm going to have uh, my PayPal and my Venmo in the description. So you can uh, donate a dollar or two. Every donation I get uh, brightens my day. So again, uh, my name is Adam Winrich. Thanks for watching.